Edinburgh. World Heritage Site since 1995. And that status will afford many of the older buildings some protection. But we can't save and protect every single old building. And as you wander down the Royal Mile from the castle to the Palace of Holyrood House, it all feels very old. There's tall, tottery buildings that have, in places have a medieval feel to them. But in fact, if you stop and just really look, you'll see that some of these buildings are perhaps not as old as they may initially seem. And in fact, the one or two of them are, are modern. But as I say, we just can't save every single old building. Today, I'm going to have a look at old town plans uh, combined with old maps and old photographs and modern footage to try and uh, just uh, create a picture and a handle on buildings in the city that have survived the centuries. And I'm also going to look at some of the buildings that we've lost. And there's been quite a few structures that have gone over the years. It's not just buildings. In one occasion, a whole street has just vanished. And we'll have a look at that. We're going to start up by the castle. Welcome to Old Edinburgh. Here we have a rather grand view of Edinburgh from the castle in 1865. It's a view that's not really changed a lot. As they were assembling seating for the next tattoo, I wasn't able to take comparison footage for this lovely old photo dating to 1880. We're looking down Castle Hill from the castle's esplanade, with a few men and dogs lounging around. The building on the far right is known as Cannonball House, named from the cannonball embedded in its gable end. It's unlikely to be there as the result of a battle, as cannonballs do not generally stick to walls, and it may have been placed there as some sort of marker. Further down the Royal Mile into Lawn Market, and on the left we see Gladstone's Land, built in 1631 and named after the man who had it built, Thomas Gladstone. It is open to the public and owned by the National Trust for Scotland. On the right is the Robbie Burns Bar, located near the building in which poet Robert Burns stayed when first visiting Edinburgh in 1786.
corner of Northbridge and High Street has changed beyond all recognition. Mid-nineteenth century town plans show many closes and wines, the Ship Tavern and the Temperance Hotel. You can see a set of steps curving to the left and a well, both of which are shown in this 1898 photo. The Temperance Hotel in the photo is not the one shown in that plan. There were in fact many Temperance Hotels in that area at that time. You can also see what at one time was the house and shop of poet Alan Ramsay, who lived here in the early 18th century. This building was demolished in 1899. In the 19th century, many parts of Edinburgh still felt and looked medieval, with many buildings looking squint and tottery and built more from wood than stone. Old photos of high school wind, Cowgate and Cowgate Port, reveal many a ramshackle jumble that looks about to fall down of its own accord. John Knox's house in the High Street retains that higgledy-piggledy jumble of medieval quaintness and is thankfully still with us. It's not always easy trying to determine whether a building you are looking at is the same one in an old photo. Over the centuries, certain alterations may have taken place to change its appearance. This 1902 photo shows a statue on a building in the Cannon Gate. On first impressions, you may think it's the same building. The statue is still there. And although the original close has gone, the windows look much the same, with the same spacing between them. But in actual fact, the original building, called Morocco Land, was demolished and rebuilt in 1958, the statue being saved and put back on the new building.
And so, to the foot of the Royal Mile, by the palace of Holyrood House, and some very well-behaved children in 1905. Thankfully, this view looks much the same today. And not far away is White Horse Close, seen here in a map dating to 1813. The buildings here, as shown in this 1885 photo, retain a medieval charm and still exist today. And now to an area of Edinburgh that has seen many changes in recent years. Here in this town plan dating to 1852, we can see Lindsay Place, opposite Greyfriars Place and Old Greyfriars Church. Lindsay Place has completely gone. Town plans, maps and old photos can help us recreate what was once there. We can see George IV Hotel, Heriot School and a few public houses, or PH. This Ordnance Survey map reveals a little more. A post office, a school of medicine and analytical laboratory. But it is old photographs that reveal all that was lost, later to be replaced by a new wing of the National Museum of Scotland. So, as I prob probably already said, Lindsay Place here is totally gone and replaced by the new section of the National Museum of Scotland. Just on the other side of the road is Greyfriars Place, and thankfully it has remained largely intact over the centuries. Uh, I'm going to show you an old photograph just now. It dates to 1865, which is pretty early as far as photography is concerned. It's a lovely photograph. And you can see the, the buildings that we can see now in, in Greyfriars Place. Um, you can also see that one of them was John Trail's Temperance Coffee House. 
and uh, that coffee house was frequented by a Mr John Gray um, fairly regularly and uh, Mr John Gray died in 1858 just seven years before uh, this photograph was taken and um, he had a dog and uh, when he died he was buried in Greyfriars Cemetery just across the road there and for 14 years after his death the dog every day would sit by his graveside and uh, perhaps when the one o'clock gun fired that the dog would go to the coffee house to be fed by John Trail. It's just a lovely story. Uh, the dog's name is Bobby, Greyfriars Bobby and uh, the rest, as they say, uh, is history. Um, I, I find it just very exciting looking at photographs as early as that. And, you know, it's, it's, it seems to be a real link with the past, with the Greyfriars Bobby story. And wh while there is some uncertainties as far as the story is concerned, and that there was allegedly two uh, John uh, Greys who lived in this area, and who died around about the same time. So it's maybe not certain there uh, if uh, the, the John Gray who owned Greyfriars Bobby was it a policeman or a, or a Highlander. There's a little bit of uncertainty there, but nevertheless, it's just a lovely story. And when I look at this photograph, it just really brings it uh, forward into the present. It's a real link with the past. Just along from Lindsay Place used to be Bristow Street, which, like Lindsay Place, has totally vanished. It was demolished in stages in the 1960s to make way for the expansion of the University of Edinburgh. I'm sure there are many people today who will still remember Parker's department store and the many pubs that were erased, like the Woolpack Inn. Well, that was old Edinburgh. 
bit of a mixed bag, which is what I expected as I was wandering around. Lots of buildings that have survived uh, the centuries, but an awful lot of losses there. After my final bit of footage in the grass market, where it was very busy, there was a market on, it was impossible to get any meaningful footage, the number of people that were milling about. Um, but after that I came along uh, Fountain Bridge to where I am just now. I'm in the Athletic Arms, uh, just beside Dalry Cemetery. It's sometimes also called Diggers. It's just a lovely old pub. A pub that I've not really been in that often and I think I should have done because it's just got a nice old feel to it. And as I came along Fountain Bridge I passed the site of what used to be McCune's Brewery. Um, I'll show you a, a, a photograph just now. I think it dates to the 1960s and once again it's by a, a man who uh, it recorded an awful lot of uh, architecture and buildings in Scotland before it disappeared and this photo shows uh, part of the Fountain uh, Bridge Brewery Fountain Brewery, Fountain Bridge Brewery um, and uh, that building, and most of the brewery has gone, it's, it's mostly housing um, in the early 1970s I actually worked for a very short spell as a stationary stores clerk uh, for McEwan's Brewery at Gilmore Park by Fountain Bridge. And th th that building um, that the stationary stores was in is the only part of the brewery that's, that's left. It's all, everyone else is just gone. Uh, it's the same with uh, Younger's Holyrood Brewery. Uh, in Edinburgh, it's also gone, uh, now occupied uh, in part, if not uh, wholly, by the Scottish Parliament building. And, you know, I've always had a great interest in beer and breweries. Uh, many years ago, for a couple, just, just a few years, I, I was the editor of the Scottish Brewing Archives annual journal. Uh, which wasn't a huge deal, you know, it was, <laughs> it was an annual LA5 booklet thing that you, so being responsible for that wasn't a huge responsibility but it was nevertheless something I took a great deal of pride in um, and I find it just utterly, it's just unbelievable that two of the largest breweries in Edinburgh William Youngers and William McEwen. In fact, two of the largest breweries in Scotland, if not in the whole world, have essentially been wiped off the face of the earth. Most of the structures to do with these breweries have gone. <laughs> um, and as I say, the only part of McEwen's Fountain Bridge Brewery is the building that I that I passed there that used to contain the stationery store. Um, but you can still get McEwan's beers. This is a, a pint of uh, McEwan's 80. When McEwan's Fountain Bridge Brewery closed, parts of the operation were divvied up you might say and the uh, bottled beers although still getting produced maybe made somewhere I don't know where some of the draft beer I think was uh, brewed and uh, maybe still is brewed in the nearby Caledonian brewery here in Edinburgh and only in the last couple of days in the press it was announced that the Caledonian brewery after 153 years of existence is to close so that um, McEwan's draft beers that were brewed there will I don't know where they'll get brewed 
it's just a very sad uh, thing for the Caledonian brewery to shut. It's a historic brewery, it's been on the good parts of that brewery go right back to its very existence. And I think it just goes to show that the buildings and the architecture come and go, their survival is never assured and we've seen lots of buildings in Edinburgh that have gone, a whole street that vanished to allow the expansion of Edinburgh University. And now we've got a old and quite magnificent brewery, the Caledonian brewery, will now shut. Very sad day indeed. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.